I'm about eight hours into my drive down to Missouri. This past weekend was the opener for Minnesota, and I was going to hunt there first, but uh, given all the rain that we've been having, it wasn't really safe, I didn't think, for me to be able to climb the bluffs that I was planning on climbing uh, to get up there opening weekend. So I switched around my rutcation days, and I'm going to Missouri now, and then I'll hit Minnesota later in the week when it's going to be nice and cold. I'm going to meet up with Bobby this morning. He basically has already done some scouting. He's got scrape locations marked on Onyx. And then for myself, I've also marked a whole bunch of terrain funnels, uh, be it steep cuts where I think there might be trails over ravines or saddles in the national forest. Just basically that whole national forest, there's not a whole lot of agriculture. Any agriculture that there is around in this area is on private land and the public is almost entirely wooded. So I'm probably gonna try and hit the woods pretty much right away and start looking for sign and looking for a place to set up. All right, it's the first evening sit out here in Missouri. Me and Bobby just did a little bit of quick scouting on the National Forest and uh, Basically, I'm set up near where a drainage comes up and I'm kind of on the leeward side of a ridge set up so that the wind's kind of in my face right now. I'm expecting to see deer up on top of the ridge and then as the thermal start dropping in the evening, again, my sons will sort of get pulled away from the top of that ridge. So if there's any deer sort of filtering along the top of that ridge, I should be in a pretty good position. It's now the next morning. Last night I did end up seeing just a glimpse of one deer moving through the creek bottom right before last light. Didn't have time to get the camera on it and couldn't quite tell what it was. Uh, Bobby didn't see anything. And this morning we both just dropped down into a big sort of drainage area. He went one way, I went the other. And where I set up, it's basically where kind of like a bunch of creek bottoms sort of converge which means there's also a bunch of uh, high ground points that converge. So if deer are crossing from one way to another, it's basically like a, a small little convergence hub down in the bottom. And so because it's the morning, obviously we got dropping thermals and the wind is also going the same direction as where the creek would flow if there was water in it. So basically, as long as the thermals are dropping, I got the wind in my favor and I'm set up to sort of take advantage of any deer that would be kind of crossing through this lower drainage area. All right, the rain's just starting. It's about 9.45. And what I decided to do just before this is I just did a quick speed scout of the area. So this place has a lot of topography, but it's not very steep. And so essentially what I tried to find was an elevation where the deer are traveling, especially the bucks when they're cruising. Normally that would be kind of your leeward just down from the top military crest, but they don't always really have a military crest, it's not steep enough. And so what I basically did is I looked for the little secondary ridges coming off the main ridge and tried to see where they would kind of top out. And I just went right along the top edge of all those and that's why I started seeing the rubs. And it seemed like just about every one of those secondary ridges, when it would meet kind of that main ridge, there'd be like a rub or two there. And you could see in the tracks, I mean, the, the leaves are still moist. You can see some of the leaves are kicked up. You can see some hoof print indentations in the ground. It seemed like a pretty common theme and all those secondary points kind of around this main point. I saw a lot of rubs and they're always at that same elevation. So it was a little bit hard to find because there wasn't sort of a hard to find trail at all. So I would see some ridge or some uh, rubs down along those secondary ridges too. Deer can be traveling up those and they've been going perpendicular. And so I want to set up potentially where I could get a little bit of both of that action sitting between two of those secondary ridges. So 
So it continued to rain throughout most of the day yesterday, and I pretty much just went off of the knowledge that I got from scouting yesterday to be able to go in and pick my tree this morning. I had two spots that I was really trying to choose between a secondary ridge that had a couple big rubs on uh, each corner of it. And then the other one, there wasn't actually much sign at all, but there's a big, almost like a sinkhole, where there's like a big vertical ledge and there's a point kind of dropping off the end of that. And so, even though there's not a lot of sign, there's obviously huge potential to really choke down that deer movement. I made the decision to hunt above the sinkhole and ensure that any deer that I do see likely are gonna come within range. Now Bobby, he's over hunting in the other spot that I was gonna sit. So we got them both covered today. I mean, those, those does would have been right underneath my tree if it would have kept coming. Um, but obviously the sun's just glaring off me, so any movement at all with the camera or anything in that lead doe spotted me. I'm only like maybe 14 feet off the ground right now. I'd like to be higher. I might go and just move to a different tree that's about 25 yards from here. I can still cover all the movement that I've been seeing, uh, but I'd be able to climb up a lot higher in that one. And I'll be able to set up so that the sun's to my back. It's a little after one o'clock right now. I'm about 20 yards away from where I was originally set up this morning, but I think this uh, new tree is a little bit better set up for the various shots I could get and the expected deer movement. Since I've made the move, I've seen one deer had a young buck come in and uh, he didn't stick around too long, but uh, that was around 11 a.m. So it's that time of year where you just gotta do all day sets, you're never quite sure what time they can move through.
it's about 15 minutes before sunset and I hadn't seen anything since 11 a.m. but then I just had that buck come through my standards for this trip were to shoot a legal buck and that deer definitely had four points on one side makes him a legal deer my initial thought was that I thought the hit looked a little bit far forward but I remember him giving that nice high kick and when he took off he made quite a bit of noise and pretty sure I heard him crash would have been just a little bit further than I can see so I'm gonna get down real quick and check the arrow and see what it looks like before it gets dark Well, yeah, he definitely didn't go too far. Found him pretty much right where I thought he crashed. That entry hole went right through the shoulder blade and it exited through the opposite armpit. There wasn't really much blood on the ground. I pretty much just walked right to where he was and these woods are open enough. I was able to pretty much walk right up on him. Pretty excited, I mean, the spot that I picked, I picked it for the reason that that little, you know, ledge would sort of corral deer movement around a lot better than sort of all this other rolling uh, hardwoods. And sure enough, that deer walked literally right on the top side of that, that ledge. National forest land down here in Missouri in a place I've never been before. When we got a, basically a couple days to fill the tag, more than happy. So I called Bobby over, we're gonna get this guy gutted, and then we're gonna have a long drag out of here. <laughs> 